Welcome back, Survivalists. Today, we're gonna take a look and break down every item in the SOL Origin Survival Kit. And I like doing these Survival Kit breakdown videos to give you an idea of what items you should include in your own Survival Kit or your own emergency preparations. Or if you wanted to hit the easy button, you could purchase one of these mini Survival Kits and use that as a starting place and allow that to get your basics covered so you can then expand on your Survival Kit and make it more specific to your scenario. And I gotta say for a survival kit of this price and at this size, I'm actually pretty impressed with everything they're able to cram into the survival kit. A lot of survival kits in this price range and this size is just a tin and they get a bunch of cheap junk and kind of like cram as much into that tin as they can. But with this, they actually put a lot of thought into it to get as much functionality as they can out of each of these individual items. And there's a lot of little bells and whistles attached with this survival kit. And I'm pretty impressed with that, that it is, this is not just a cheap kind of thrown together survival kit. They put a lot of thought into this. So let's go ahead and start with kind of breaking this down. So on the very front here, you have a lid that opens up and you've got a signal mirror. And I love that. That is a huge, huge um, thing that could really help you out in a survival situation. And it has a little window here, so you can actually look at it, and that should help you kind of navigate and direct the reflective uh, light of the mirror, and even has some instructions built right into it of how to use it. And I think that survival or uh, reflective mirrors like this are kind of an underrated survival tool. You don't see this all that often but this could be incredibly valuable in many survival situations. A lot of times in a survival situation, your goal isn't necessarily to survive. Your goal is to escape and communicate with somebody else and get rescued. That's a lot of your, your priority is getting rescued. And so I love that they have this built into it right on the top, right into the case. So you don't have to worry about losing this mirror. It's built into the case. It's bright orange, can be easy to find. Now on the back, they even have a few more tools built into the outside of the case. Now the first thing that they have here is a ferro um, striker, right? So this is just like you'd find on a uh, lighter. This is their ferro rod and steel striker right here to help you start a fire. And I'm, I'm okay with this design. You know, a lot of times when you have a ferro rod and you have a knife, a big problem that people have is that the knife keeps sliding off and kind of disrupting your tinder that you're trying to light. Now there's a couple of tricks to that where you can place your knife down and then pull the ferro rod towards you. But nonetheless, it can be a little tricky to kind of get that going. And this just really simplifies it. And so for certain types of people, having something simple like this may be a better tool than having a striker and a ferro rod. So I, I don't hate this. I'm not upset by it at all. Uh, the only thing I'm not a little concerned about is that what if this breaks? You know, what if this gets jammed up and that pops off? Um, you could probably disassemble this and kind of make it work without that. But this is not a bad thing right here. Now in the back here, they also have a little cheap compass and I'm okay with that. The compass seems to work well enough. It's a cheap compass, you know, you can get these all over the place, but that's definitely a great item to include in uh, your survival kit. And then on the back here, they also have a their knife. And so I'm really happy to see that they included a knife in this. This knife also has a few different functionalities, but when you pop this open, you have kind of a pretty small blade. It's just a small blade, but it feels very sturdy. It feels very solid. There is no wiggle to this at all. It has kind of the, uh, the traditional locking mechanism here. And this seems like a solid enough knife. I'm happy enough with this knife and I'm really happy that they included that. A lot of times when you have survival kits this size, they don't always include a knife in there. So I'm happy that they have that. It feels solid enough, has a little bit of jimping on the back here, has the nice locking mechanism. So that is a great inclusion into your survival kit. What I also really like is that this knife has an LED flashlight. I don't know if you can see that right there, but that is huge. That's not something that you see in a lot of survival kits. Um, and that is really an underrated item in survival situation, especially in the winter time that it gets dark much earlier. Really, once it gets dark, if you don't have a fire going, you're kind of, you know, kind of shit out of luck there. You can't really do a whole lot when it's pitch black out. And so having a little bit of light, this is not a very bright light at all, but having some sort of light like this in your survival kit is definitely a great addition. It's just a little LED light. So I'm really happy with that. 
There's one more functionality built into this and that is a whistle built into the base of the knife. You know, not the best whistle out there, but it works. And again, this is to help you signal uh, for rescue and get rescued. That is a, that's a functionality of survival kits that you don't see all the time is um, ways to alert people to your presence so that you can get rescued. A lot of times survival kits focus on a lot of the other aspects of survival, shelter and water purification. And I think that the fact that this survival kit has that emphasis on getting rescued and has the reflective mirror built into it and the rescue whistle built into it, kind of the simplistic fire starter, kind of hints at who their target audience is for this and who this survival kit is really meant for. And it's actually not meant for somebody who is hiking out in the woods 20 miles all alone and may have to spend several nights in the woods all alone. You wouldn't be able, this isn't really ideal for that situation. Who this kit is really for is for somebody who is dirt biking or doing a little day hike or canoeing, something like that, doing some outdoor activity where they may get lost in the woods maybe overnight is kind of the worst case scenario. And their emphasis is really on getting rescued. So with that in mind, let's continue on and take a look at what else is included. So this kit does open it up and it does have some additional items on the inside here. So first thing first is we have some uh, tinder here, some fire starters to use with your, your uh, striker. And so these kind of fluff up and these are very easy to light. So let's go ahead and give that a try and see if I can get this thing to go with the striker that they included. So if I Take this out, let's see. Look at that, that lit up right away. So these two items are really meant for each other, meant to work well. And this works incredibly well with this uh, little striker. <sighs> so that worked great. Um, and so you have four of those, so that should help you start at least four fires, maybe more if you really can serve that. So that is definitely a great item. Again, if somebody is, um, you know, lost in the woods just for one night. This is all that they really need is a small fire starter kit. Oh, I hope my smoke alarm doesn't go off. All right, so moving along, we also have a lanyard in the survival kit. This does attach to the outside of the case. Um, you know, I'm not, that's kind of, kind of indifferent to that. Maybe you could reuse this for a couple of different purposes. Now you also have some cordage here. That is definitely something good to include in your survival kit. Cordage is gonna allow you, or make it much easier for you to build some sort of shelter. You can use a lot of cordage in first aid for applying splints. Um, and there's just a lot of functionality to use cordage. So I'm really happy that they're they're including this and it seems like a pretty solid braided cordage here in the, on this kit. So moving along, we also have a fishing kit. So this is kind of an interesting choice because again, you know, it seems like the target audience for this is going to be like, adventurers and um, extreme sport act, uh, enthusiasts and people like doing activities outdoors. So including a fishing kit, you know, that does kind of hint at that they are trying to reach a more longer term um, survival situation. Because really, like really, you could be lost in the woods for a few days and not eat anything, you're perfectly fine. Um, so this is kind of giving you that option in case you do have to survive a little bit longer. They have a couple of different hooks in here. They've got a fair amount of fishing line. They've got a sewing needle and a couple of safety pins here. So the sewing needle and safety pins are great. I'm happy to see that. A lot of people don't think that, uh, realize that your one of your top priorities is shelter and your clothes are your first line of shelter in a survival situation. And if you get a tear in your shirt, if you kind of ignore that, that is going to quickly rip open very quickly. So having some safety pins and having some sewing line with this fishing line, you could repair your, your first layer of shelter. And I do think that that's pretty important that you guys should definitely include in your survival kit as well. So moving along, we also have a good bit of metal wire in here. And really the, the main reason that you wanna have some metal wire like this is to use um, for snare lines, mainly for catching squirrels. And this is actually pretty strong metal wire here. Now there are some other functionalities that you can use with this. You can use this as cordage if you're building a shelter. Um, you can also use this to hang um, food or containers of water above a fire as well. There's just a lot of different functionality. So I'm definitely happy to see that they're including this in their survival kit. 
And then another item that they have in here is a large roll of tin foil. This actually feels like pretty solid tin foil as well. I've reviewed some other survival kits where the tin foil was so thin that just me unfolding it ripped the tin foil and made it pretty uh, useless. So this feels like, you know, thick enough tin foil. And that's a good amount of sheet there. One, you could use this as more of a reflector, again, to try to get somebody's attention. But you could also cook something in this. Um, and you can even boil water in tin foil like this. You make a little cup out of it. You put some contaminated or some, you know, some stream water or something in there. You can use this to boil the water and purify it. Uh, and that's why I really like having tin foil in there to purify water, to cook food. And there's just other probably functionalities that you can use. You can even tear off a little sheet of this and attach it to your fish hook. You know, having some tin foil kind of folded up like that is a pretty good item to include in your survival kit. And this, it just feels a little bit thicker, which I like. It's not super paper thin, um, like a lot of tin foil in the survival kit. So you actually could, you know, use this to make a cup like that. You could probably do that a few times um, in a bad survival situation. So this is definitely a great thing to include in the survival kit. Now they have one more item in here, which I am very happy to see. And that is a little survival manual. And this survival manual, when you open it up, it actually shows you how to use a lot of the tools included in this kit. Kind of talks about the priorities um, and just other good to know things in a survival situation. How to build a shelter, how to build a fire using these exact tools and says 62 life-saving tools and techniques. So I'm very happy to see that they include this and this is kind of a wax paper as well. So it's most likely water resistant. And I think that having a manual like this is going to give you a lot more confidence. You know, they often say that, you know, you have to, it's the person has the heart to survive that ultimately survives. So I think having confidence is pretty important in a wild wilderness situation. And it's not just about having the gear, but it's about having the knowledge. So I think having something like this will give you a lot of that confidence that you can survive that situation. So I like that they're including this in there. You know, also my theory is that when people get bored in disaster situations, that's when they make mistakes. That's when they do stupid things. So you really, I, I'm a big advocate for having a deck of cards or a book or something like that in your home emergency kit. Um, and so having something that somebody could read, you know, if they're lost in the woods and camping out overnight, having something that they can read to keep their mind uh, occupied and entertained, that could be the difference between them doing something stupid uh, and just kind of following the course and staying alive. So I'm really happy to see that they're including this in their survival kit as well. Now the actual compartment in here is not very big because they have all this other functionality on the other side. There's not much space in here, but I still think that there is a little bit more space. And there are a few things that are not included in the survival kit that I really wish that they would have included. One of them would be some water purification towels. Again, those are super small and super compact. You could easily fit a few of those in here, including all this other stuff. Um, and you could add that to the survival kit as well. Another item I didn't see in here is first aid. Again, you could put a couple band-aids in this uh, survival kit, just so if you get a bad cut or something, you can keep that clean and keep it from getting infected in a survival situation. So I'm a little surprised they didn't talk about water or touch on water purification or first aid with the items in the survival kit. But again, you can build on this and add additional items to that. So who is this kit really for? I think that this kit is for outdoor enthusiasts who don't really want to put much thought into prepping for emergencies and survival situations and just kind of want to have all the boxes checked for them. You know, if you're out motorbiking or you're out hunting or hiking or something along those lines, snowboarding, I think that this is a great compact kit that you can easily stick in your back pocket or your book bag and you have a lot of your basic necessities met. I don't think that this kit's necessarily for, you know, diehard preppers and survivalists. You know, I think that you guys could really build your own kit, probably have a little bit more in depth than this, but I definitely think this is not a bad kit. And I'm actually, for the size and for the price, I'm pretty impressed with all the functionality that you get out of this kit. And I'm pretty happy with this. 
So if you guys do want to check this kit out, I will have a link to it down in the description below. And if you guys want to check out more survival kit breakdowns, you can watch another one of those right here. Don't forget to subscribe for more prepping and survival videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next video.